I'm Joshua Kemble and this is my vloggins. So, uh, today I am again heading to where I work as a full-time art director and uh, I'm just trying to kind of map out like what exactly I'd like to accomplish tonight. So my hope is to get uh, the second, I think I have about two pages left of rough thumbnails for Two Stories Book Two. Two Stories Book One, it's a comic book about faith and mental illness, a memoir that's uh, pretty heartfelt that I hand lettered, hand inked, um, and hand drew, and hopefully can hand to you uh, in print. So it's, it's uh, available on Amazon.com, and um, that, uh, for, for like a really reduced rate. So if you have Prime, you can basically get free shipping on it. First book is pretty awesome. Most people I know who've read it will have really enjoyed it. So yeah, so there's that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, so basically um, I have created uh, my proposal. Um, uh, it's like a pitch basically for a book when you're sending it out to publishers for through my literary agent. I sent in my first draft um, yesterday and then the cool thing is like yesterday morning my literary agent got it. Uh, I should name drop her actually Keely. She's amazing. Um, and then uh, basically um, she gave me really good feedback and revision ideas um, for the proposal and I had adapted it, uh, revised it, and, and sent it back out. So uh, at this point it's getting a once over again and hopefully uh, it's good to go. Although honestly usually these things take one or two uh, revisions to basically revise because our goal mutually like myself and my literary agent is to try to give it the best option of getting the best publisher possible. So, so that's where we're at. Um, and so that process, those wheels are turning. I realized today too, um, I did a side project last year that I want to make a yearly thing, which was making my own, uh, album. And I kind of want to do that again. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. So basically I need to try to kind of, kind of get that going. Um, I'm like four songs in. And in order to hit the end of the year uh, for my little personal goal, I would probably need to track a song um, this month. And my goal would be to have like a full album again this year just for fun. So that's something I'm thinking might be fun to kind of do um, uh, or carve at. I don't know if I'll have time, honestly, until maybe the weekend. Um, but it is something to kind of, for me to consider and kind of turn about and see if that's a possible thing. I also, like, I'm pretty stoked. Um, I did my biking when I got home yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm kind of using uh, riding a bike as like my alternating exercise uh, throughout the week. So. Um, that happened and I got like three miles instead of one. Uh, it did help that the weather was about like 10 degrees lower. It was more like 98. Well, I guess that's like, uh, six degrees lower. Um, but the first bike ride I did where I only got a mile was like about 104 degrees. Um, so I think the temperature difference made it, made a huge difference there. But what was cool was I'm starting to kind of get in the flow of it a little bit. Like, I don't have a great bike. Um, I did get some gear that I felt kind of nerdy about um, initially, and I'm so thankful I did. Uh, and I'm starting to realize, like, I so I got, like, uh, mountain bike shorts, which are way less embarrassing for me personally because I'm, like, just I'm not a confident person um, than, like, the tight kind of spandex type outfit um so I did get like padded uh um bike shorts but they're for um for mountain bikers so they kind of just look like skate uh skater um shorts which is kind of awesome um 
So I got those. I was so thankful because they're of a material that kind of resists sweat. And uh, I need to actually probably get like a jersey or something. Something that has a material that's gonna resist sweat because by the time I was done with just that three miles, I was covered like it, my, my shirt was like a sponge just holding all this wet, ugly sweat like to, to me. And yet those, those pants that I ordered that I felt kind of weird and self-conscious about, like no sweat, it was off, they were awesome. So I have to kind of keep that in mind too. Um, but yeah, uh, also I got like um, some really dorky um, shades. <laughs> And I shouldn't call these things dorky. I think a lot of this has to do with my own um, self-confidence and stuff. The fact that I feel like it's dorky, but it's like biker shades, um, which really helped actually. They arrived in the mail and I put them on and uh, for my ride and it helped a lot. It reduces glare when you're kind of heading in like more of a sunny area. And that makes sense in our valley. Um, so, yeah, so basically I, I did the bike stuff and I realized by doing it, I was like so thankful for the gear. Like I have a little water bottle too, which is super important in the area we live in. It's like, if you don't stay hydrated doing that stuff, like you're gonna die on that road. Um, and then I, I confidently felt pretty good about um, hitting the streets. I mean, like most of the route that I take has like pretty sufficient um, bike lanes. Um, and, and it just went really well. So I was, I was pretty excited about that. And uh, I'm overcoming my own self-doubt about, uh, about the whole biking thing, which is cool. I, I don't know if I'm gonna be like joining a biker team or anything like that um, anytime soon, because I'm frankly, honestly, I probably wouldn't be able to keep up with them. Like a lot of those guys are super in shape. Um, but I will say like, I, I'm pretty happy with how it, how it uh, worked out. And, uh, yeah, so, um, so that's cool for like an alternating exercise. So what I need to do tonight is also, uh, hit the rowing machine and then do my weights and stuff. Um, and I know I talk a lot about exercise. What's weird is I used to just absolutely hate any kind of talk of exercise or thought of exercise, but as I've gotten older, it just becomes really essential, uh, to keep my mind um, and body from like aching all the time, my mind kind of agile and, and, and ready uh, to kind of work and, and adapt and like, I don't know, I'm sure there's science to it, but my point is if I do it, I feel better um, and more equipped to actually get work done. So yeah, so those are all uh, things. And then we did the indie review show yesterday um, and that was really cool. Um, and we reviewed uh, Joe the Barbarian, which is an amazing book um, by uh, Sean Gordon Murphy, who I had never really uh, read his stuff before um, or, or seen his art. Um, and I should have, because he's like a rock star in the industry. But I think because I delved so far into like the fanographics, like drawn in quarterly, like kind of artsy underground scene, I've missed a lot of stuff that's a little bit more mainstream, but is like incredible and still independent comics. So it's one of my favorite things about doing the indie review show with Corey is he'll kind of bring these things to the table that are like things I should have read, like they're huge in the comic world, but I just somehow miss them. And uh, so I really like appreciate that ability to kind of find out about work. Um, and artwork and stuff and man for the page layouts like those that book is just like incredible so there's that um yeah and then um let's see what else what else do i need to do honestly uh i did end up uh getting the time to review the script i promised a friend of mine that i'd review uh, their script for the next comic and I'm so glad I got the opportunity to do it. It's a really good script. I don't want to reveal uh, what script it is um, but it was really cool and uh, I did finally uh, was able to make the time to kind of like pour through it and stuff because when I get feedback in this script in particular like a lot of the plot was very like nicely worked out so it was mostly just like here's some ideas 
Uh, the dialogue's a little weird here. Like, just the little things here and there that I think might improve, like, the kind of flow of the story. But the general story arc is working very well. There wasn't a lot of confusion. Um, and uh, there, there was, for me, there were a few things, like, there was a, um, a kind of reveal a little early that I felt like maybe if you reveal a little later, it'll, you know, kind of um, create, like, a good... Um, a good kind of diversion in the plot, um, and, and draw out a little more suspense, but I also understood why they inserted that there, so a lot of it was just, like, my, my little opinions, and hopefully, like, you know, take them or leave them kind of thing, but when I offer to read somebody's work, I really do want to be meticulous and really go through it and kind of find out, um, I want to give real feedback, right, if I make that promise to somebody, I really want to deliver on it, um, I have, like, two other things that I need to read. My brother actually wrote a short story, which I need to read really bad, because uh, he's, he's a great dude. He's actually an English professor um, up north and uh, in California, but it's like, um, but, I, but I need to um, read his story, because I'm like so excited that he wrote a story. He wrote a short story for like the first time in years. Um, earlier this year, and it was really cool and interesting, and, uh, and he's written another, which, which makes me really excited, so that's, that's happening, um, let's see what else, I think that's pretty much it, um, I, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, a really good work day, um, I am, uh, I, I do, uh, tonight also have, um, uh, our little, uh, church meeting, because we're kind of, um, creating our own little church, not like a, its own church, really, just like a gathering where we read the Bible, um, and, uh, pray and stuff like that, uh, and aren't, <clears throat> like, too politically, um, influenced, like, I think just kind of trying to figure out what the Word actually says, um, and so that's tonight, and I'm pretty excited about that, too, um, cause that fellowship's like really important, I think, um, for what I believe and, and all that stuff. So, uh, all of that's happening and, um, yeah, it's just the, the only struggle right now is like the same consistent struggle, you know, that, uh, that I've been having for the last few years, which is just like, I have never been busier in my life to where... I have more projects and, and like less time to do things than I've ever had in my life. Um, and that's fascinating, you know, it makes me think back to times in my twenties where, uh, where I thought I was too busy, um, to do art projects, you know, and I honestly kind of think that's a pervasive thing amid like artists, uh, you know, in their twenties especially in art school, right, where it's, like, you kind of feel like, um, <clears throat> usually around that time, at least for me, I had to work full-time, um, and then go to school full-time, and th that work-school balance is, like, close to impossible, um, you feel like, oh my gosh, I have, like, you know, four projects due in, like, two weeks, like, what am I gonna do, this is insane, and then, then you work freelance and you realize like, oh crap, like I had so much time. And then you get older and it's like, I, I don't know, for me, especially having a kid, I've started realizing like, wow, I really have no time. Like, and, and honestly, I knew people who were parents when I was uh, going to school and I'm, I'm amazed they had time to like kind of finish their degree and get through it because it's, it's a real challenge to, um, to kind of get those things going. So yeah, so anyhow, that to me feels like this season of life is like uh, just being way too busy, um, but like busy in a good way, like uh, on a lot of personal projects, and uh, then of course my career, which I, you know, I enjoy my career, I feel really lucky and fortunate to have uh, the career I have, and um, yeah, and then another thing I've been thinking about recently is just kind of perspective stuff which is something I need to just kind of stay, stay cognizant of. Um, I think often, uh, like, uh, um, 
here's a good example. Um, people in general, in my experience, tend to behave in a trustworthy way when you treat them like they're going to behave in a trustworthy way. Um, when you treat people in good faith, they tend to extend good faith back to you. Um, and I think uh, this isn't like guaranteed and I definitely don't know if like there's some kind of karmic thing in the universe because I've definitely seen <coughs> really bad things happen to good people. Um, and we live in a world where bad things happen to really good people. Um, you know, and, and sometimes it's things that weren't like invited. It's not like you were putting that energy out in the universe and then it came back and bit you. Um, but there is a little bit, a little bit of that, like where what you put out does kind of come back to get you a little bit. Um, not always. So it's not like a karmic law, but there's definitely a little bit of that. Um, and, and I think there's that to like work. Um, I think a lot of the times, um, it's easy to get stuck in kind of like a rut where, uh, where like you complain or, or feel really, uh, annoyed or overburdened with, uh, work and can kind of miss the blessing that it is. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and I'm not trying to like hashtag bless this nonsense or anything. Um, I'm just saying like, I personally need to work on being more kind of thankful for the position I have and, uh, and in, in general in life, like, you know, thankful for the things I have and not looking at the things I don't or thankful for the project I'm working on, like during the journey of it, as opposed to kind of looking forward to the next project or jumping ahead to like finished because sometimes like finishing a project and, and don't get me wrong. That's always my goal, right? Like I like finished work. I like I like whatever I do being a printed book or like a finished album or whatever the project is. Like, I, um, this is probably why I ended up going into commercial art. It like doesn't feel finished for me when I do art unless it's in print. And uh, the second I see it in print, I'm like, okay, okay, job done, right? Um, but uh, just enjoying the process, enjoying the process of promotion, like, instead of kind of uh, approaching, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be trying to book comic conventions. This is becoming a little harder than I thought, uh, but but it's still on my plate of things to do. And that's another thing that I need to like work on this weekend is like keep hitting the comic shops. Uh, keep, uh, I, I, I do need to like touch base and see if I can set up some in stores. And, um, and then also like definitely get in on some conventions. Cause I think at a convention, uh, from my experience doing that, um, that Wednesday, uh, comic book signing, I'm like I made okay sales. I would have made table if that was a convention easily. So I, I think, um, I think I need to explore that. And also, but here's the thing. If I approach a convention being like, I'm going to go here, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to make tons of money. Um, it's like almost like setting your expectation for failure. Um, and that's not to say that I should go in and be like, I'm going to suck. Nothing's going to sell anything like that. It's just like if you approach promotion as a journey that you can be thankful for and enjoy in the process. And then, yeah, sure. Aim big, like, you know, shoot for the moon, um, swing for the fences, I guess they say. Um, that, that's, that's good. You should always swing for the fences, but also enjoy the fact that you're playing ball, right? Like that you're actually in the game and that you, uh, that you're able to swing a bat, right? Like, I mean, just with sports analogies always come up with these kind of things, but you know, I think often we'll kind of forget that like, it's actually fun to be playing the game in the first place. And, and, and at least I shouldn't say we, I should say I will forget. So something I've been thinking about today is just like practicing thankfulness a little bit. Um, and it sounds like hippy dippy and all that, all that stuff. But I, but I think outlook is a huge thing. Um, like outlook can change, uh, let me just, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So like, um, from a certain perspective, I could be like, oh, my publisher is not the biggest publisher. Uh, 
you know, my comic, like the printing isn't exactly how I wanted it. Um, uh, not enough people are buying my book or anything like, like, it's easy to go down that route. And the problem is, the second you open that can of worms, at least for me, it's like, where does that end? Like, when is the perfect publisher? And then even if you get the perfect publisher, right? Like, what is the amount of adequate sales? Is it like having to make like the New York Times list and so on? Um, and then let's say like you succeed and like beyond your wildest expectations, then what's the parameter you're gonna be unhappy about? Is it like, oh, well they don't get my work or like the reviewers just don't understand it? Like wh where does it stop? Like that kind of negativity. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like an easy thing to engage in and like the second you dip into it and kind of open that can of worms, it can become this like cascading uh, amount of like complaint. And meanwhile, you're missing the forest for the trees. Like you're missing the journey that you're on and the fact that it's cool that you're on a journey in the first place and that you have a book in the first place. So so that's, that's what I'm getting at is like, I personally, like I, I think this is something we all have to consciously work at. But like for me, I'm really trying to enjoy the journey um, rather than just think about the results. Um, and that, that goes with like exercise as well, where it's like, hey, it's cool to have a body that can exercise. Not that I don't have a great body or anything, um, but just to have function in my body. Like it, as I get older, if I start losing function in my body, I'm gonna like regret the fact that I didn't enjoy when I was able to use it. Um, I, and, and, and like, and similarly, like, you know, uh, if I approach like conventions more like a journey and fun and like, yeah, sure. Set a goal. It's, it's a goal and take it seriously. You know, like really, I do think you have to be ambitious to, um, achieve anything in life. And that's definitely something that I've experienced, but also in that process, like, don't forget to just like enjoy the process because you know, it's, it's a really huge opportunity. So, so anyhow, um, and it's, and it's, and it's a fun experience. Um, and I think if you approach it like a fun experience, you're going to do a lot better, uh, hitting your goals and your targets, um, because, uh, you're just going to emanate more positivity and like, and, and honestly, that's, that's like an addictive, uh, thing to, to vibe off of. Like, I think for people, um, people are, are much more drawn to like kind of buy something from somebody who's having fun than somebody who's like, oh, I hate, hate this whole process. So anyhow, that's just something on my mind. I guess my point is just like, um, like I have a really cool job um, that I should be thankful for. And sometimes I'll get stuck in a loop where I'm like, oh, I can't believe I, um, or like I'll get stuck in a loop when I'm doing client work, like outside of my day job, like and I'll just be like, well, this client wants a stupid thing. Like these stupid little negativity um, bouts that I'll go on rather than just kind of appreciating every moment of the process and like the fact that like everything is a possibility and everything um, it is, is a blessing. Like everything is actually a good thing that's being kind of given. Like anything given it is something that you can work towards, but it's like, it, it really is a gift. Um, and, and, and like, you know, what, what kind of terrible person gets a gift that's not exactly what they wanted and complains, right? Like we should be thankful for gifts. Um, and, and I feel like I, I keep saying we, and when I'm talking about this, I'm saying like myself, this is something I have to constantly remind myself of, but I have noticed like the last, uh, you know, week or so, I've been like slightly negative um, about stuff, and and I think part of some of that's just exhaustion. Like, it's really hard to juggle all these things. But um, but anyhow, I need to remember to kind of try to have more of like a positive um, outlook on those things. Um, so yeah, so that's basically my thoughts uh, on that, and uh, that's my vloggings for the day. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, like, uh, when I when I even openly talk about these things, I worry it's going to make me, you know, come across as, like, some guy who's always negative. And I'm actually a fairly positive person. So it's a strange thing. Um, but I also uh, think out loud 
um, I, I tend to work things out by, by talking them out. Um, and, and actually that's one of the functions of this vlog too, is like to sort of help me organize, uh, my, my thought process and like almost like a, a journal of sorts. Um, and also kind of just share that experience with you guys, um, so that, you know, hopefully we can all learn and grow together as corny as that is. So anyhow, uh, that'll do it. Um, I hope, I, I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, do you guys ever find yourselves getting like, you know, I, I'm sure you do, but do you ever find yourself getting like stuck and kind of, uh, having more of a, lit, a negative viewpoint of, uh, of your life situation or whatever it is, um, and kind of miss, uh, some of the good things that, that are actually occurring within it because you're constantly looking for the next thing. Um, I, I catch myself doing that a lot. Um, and, uh, and it's something I got to stop doing. So anyhow, all right guys, uh, I will see you on the next vlog.